So you want to be a baller. You want to be a shot caller. You got 20-inch rims on your Impala. I almost said Honda. <laughs> then you probably are the captain of the high school mole ninja team. And you're probably into the Riot XOM. Well, welcome to the club. Here comes the review, boy. Welcome back from that incredibly unnecessary intro. <laughs> What's up, guys? Kev here. Um, so I want to do my full review on the Riot XOM and... Man, if you can't tell from previous videos and that intro, I absolutely love this knife. And it's silly. Like, it really is. It's a silly knife. It's a silly thing to love. But it's just so cool. And now I get it. Like, all the people who loved the uh, OG version, I understand you now. So... Um, yeah, I got this from Blade Ops. A big shout out to Blade Ops. Thank you so much for sending this my way. I did end up buying it. So they sent it to me to review. And, uh, I pretty much immediately was like, hey, how much I'm gonna buy it? Um, so I did pick this guy up. And, uh, so I am invested, so to speak, to the people who actually care about that. I did pay for this. Um, and this is the version with green micarta and a... Tanto 3V blade. I am waiting for them to come out with fat carbon of some sort or something, you know, something nice. Um, this is fine, but why? It's almost like they just took stuff off the scrap heap, you know. Um, I did kind of make a joke about the 3V being off the scrap heap, and some people made a good point that it's tough. And so all that rattling around and whatnot uh, could chip an edge or whatever. And uh, maybe this is the reason for the 3B. And that does make sense. Um, I would like to see... Well, we'll get to it in the review. But this is very thick behind the edge. And I just want it to be thinner. Uh, so that's where I'm at there. Anyway, let's get into the review. Uh, Blade Ops link is down below. Please use that if you're going to go check them out. It does help the channel. And somehow I have like... 2,000 clicks, unique clicks, and, like, one order. <laughs> so something's going on over there. Um, clearly, they can't sell anything. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Ah, blame the other guy. You know what I'm saying? All right, anyway, I love Blade Ops. Andy over there is a, a good dude. We joke around a lot. So shout out to you, Andy. Um <laughs> The Riot XOM Aesthetics. All right. It is really cool looking, right? Doesn't it look like... Um, it looks like one of those... Uh, what's the show or movie? You know, one of those futuristic cyberpunky type shows where they have those, like, uh, laser phaser things or whatever. It's not like a... It doesn't really look like a um, lightsaber or anything, but it looks like one of those uh, futuristic weapons energy weapons of some sort it's really cool looking i dig it um the inlay is cool again just wish it was like fat carbon or something you have some notches here it does have a clip which is really cool that they added the clip but i just don't understand why it's not reversible it would have been cool if they came up with a way to make it reversible and i mean you see this big ass pivot screw here like what if that came off and then you could flip it and it hid the notch like under there so it doesn't look um like it's reversible and it would still, you know, I don't know. They, they had some options there, but maybe because it's a pivot, they didn't want to mess with it too much. Um, but you do have a T8 right here and um, you have a T8 right here and then you have T8s right here too. So there's uh, four, six screws on this bad boy. I don't think there's any internally. I did not take it apart. Uh, I was tempted to. Um, sorry, there's two more right here. So at least eight. Um, I was tempted to take it apart and I, I put the tool in and turned and it wasn't going anywhere. And I was like, you know, is it worth it? You know, is it worth messing with this? Um, 
And the answer to that really is no, because I don't see the point in doing that, right? Like, we can make sure it's tight or whatever. Um, I don't think that's an issue here. I don't think it's going to, like, yeah. I don't think it's going to, like, loosen or anything. That feels tight. I got a little bit there. They left a little bit of room here. Let's see if we can get in there. Eh. I'm, just, I'm literally getting like the tiniest little turn. Let's see how these are. There's T6s. Nope. T8. Very tight. Very tight. So we are good to go all around. And they are all T8s confirmed. So in case anybody was wondering if this is loose, it's not. It just rattles. Um, all right. So aesthetically, it's cool. It opens up like this, which is freaking really cool. It's called the Exoskeleton. Um, right in here, you have the serial number. This is number 297-01-2023, so January 2023. You have Riot right here. You have the lock symbol and unlock symbol or vice versa. And then you have 3V right here, CPM 3V. Um, I don't really care that that's on the blade. It's very minimal, and it's the only thing on the blade. Was it necessary? No, I feel like they could have easily slapped 3V right here. Um, but some people have a weird thing about where the blade steel goes. I personally, like with my own knives, uh, with Colin for Devo, we will just put the steel somewhere hidden. So it'll be like on the inside of the handle in the backspacer, or you take off the inlay and it's printed on there, right? We don't want it just stamped right on the blade, like obvious uh billboarding you know maybe like underneath here on the tang or something but you know not everybody's like that some people feel like it has to be on the blade you know and maybe maybe that's a thing for them because they do these knives in different steels and they want to make sure they have the right steel in there i don't know coming up with the reasons here the clip is okay it's got good retention it works really well does it look the best eh, it's okay um it is titanium, which is nice. And this screw does stick out quite a bit. Now, I will admit, in pocket, I did not notice it. So, I don't think it's a real issue. But I do carry this in my back left kind of uh, mag slash phone pocket. It does not go in my front pocket. So, it may be something I just don't notice, right? The clip does come just past the handle, which I don't love. Um, I prefer when, it, when it's flush because then... You know, it's easier to, like, stand up um, or if you're holding it like this, you know, you might want to put your finger flat. It can just cause issues being a little bit past there. But it does hide the knife just slightly in your pocket, which is why they do it. So I do get it. Um, and then inside, you obviously have this Tanto blade. Um, this one's sort of a... It's not two-tone, but it kind of is. It's like a really heavy stone wash. And then a uh, horizontal belt satin. Um, or uh, maybe it's a hand satin. Yeah, it's a hand satin on the flat. There you go. Looks good. I mean, it's a clean looking knife, even though it's weird, you know. Um, ergos. So <laughs> this isn't really something, you know, you would expect to be good on this. But it's actually not bad. Um, this feels really good in my hand. Thumb lands right here. I can cut do whatever I need to do with it, and I have no issues, honestly. Um, you would think, being a square or a rectangle, sorry, that it would be kind of uncomfortable, um, but it actually fits my hand really well. If I hold it back here, I get hit by this corner down here, I think it is. What's hitting me? Yeah, I think it's that corner. Something's just hitting me a little bit. No, it's this corner right here. It's getting me in the palm. Now, right-handed, do I feel that clip? Yep. See, that's where that clip comes into play. You feel it in your palm a bit. If it was tucked down a little bit, I think it would have been nestled a little better. But I don't care because I'm not right-handed. But you could choke up a little bit and then it's not a problem. And this is how I will hold the knife. This is how I will cut things like this or like this, right? Get in there. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. I'm not like, you know. So I'm choked up like this or I'm choked up like this. Like that's pretty much how I'm holding this knife. So, for me, it's plenty comfortable. Like, if you if you are fine with the Winter Blade Factor, then this is perfectly fine. You know what I mean? It's like in the same ballpark where it's just, it's fine. 
for EDC and stuff, you're not going to chop anything crazy with this or do crazy work with it. So it's fine. Um, so ergos are good. Um, cutting. And this is where this knife is a little bit lackluster for me. And it, 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 it doesn't kill it, but it's close. And you guys know me. I'm not like the cutting expert or anything. I'm not the hard use guy who has to have the best knife ever for cutting. But like, it's just, listen, I don't know if you're going to be able to tell, but like, it's sharp, you know, and I've stropped it to try to get it sharper. Um, but it's just thick. You know, it's not quite a pry bar. I might joke around and say that, but, like, it's it's pretty thick. I'm going to guess it's in the 20s, which isn't outrageous, but, like, it feels way thicker than that. 21, 22, 18. Now, if I go down, just let me go, like, a little bit down the blade here. 40, right? I was right here, right? So right here, it's at 40. So it gets real thick, quick, is what I think the problem is. And uh, what I was mentioning in a previous video, I think it might have been a members only, so um, it, it makes it, because of the way it's ground, when you go in to cut a box open, because that's what I do, guys. I cut open Amazon boxes most of the time. I cut some cardboard down, and I pop zip ties occasionally, and I do normal stuff, but I'm mostly cutting tape and opening Amazon packages. So I need my knife to do that well, right? And if it's a thinner box, like it's a thinner, uh, I don't know how to explain that well. If the tape is really taped down, and I have to like wedge something in there to slice the tape, this tends to suck at that because it's so thick. I have to like jam it in there and then try to like swipe, right? Where something, you know, this is what else I have in my pocket is the uh, Kanwu Pulsar. If I put this in there, it's nice and thin. It'll just slide right under the tape and it'll just slice, right? And there's no, uh, it doesn't fight it at all, right? Where this fights it and... That's annoying because I want the knife in my pocket, the knife I'm really excited about to cut well, and I want it to not feel thick, you know? So I've tried stropping this a couple of times thinking, you know, it's just not that sharp. It's not that it's not sharp. It's just that it's thick. And yes, 20 thousands isn't thick, but it thickens up really quick. So this is an example of heat treats not everything. Thickness behind the edge is not everything, right? If it's ten thousandths behind the edge and then it's forty thousandths like right behind it, well, how much does that really help you? You get what I'm saying? Um, so it's not everything when you have thin behind the edge or decent behind the edge. This does not feel like a nice slicey cutter. And I want it to, you know? Um, so the real question to me is if they made it thinner, would it be an issue, right? Like, would it cause issues with um, chipping and stuff or having issues sliding and banging in and out? Because it is doing this all day, right? Like, not all day, but you get my point. So this is where something like Magna Cut, I think, would have come in handy for them. You know, they can't get it overseas, but like, you know, it's stainless, which is, like, perfect. It's got better edge retention than 3B, as I understand it. And they could probably have ground it thinner and still had it hold up. You know what I mean? So they need to find something like that, I think, and make a thinner version. Now, the other factor in that could be they left it at this thickness because it has to slide like this, right? If you have a super light blade, is it going to be as good at sliding up and down? Or is it going to be super slow because it's light? You know what I mean? So that could be a factor. Or it could just be that I have the Tanto and maybe the drop point is much slicier. Uh, I kind of want to get one. So that's where I'm at with cutting. It actually does cut fairly well um, if you're not cutting something thin like that, trying to get in. You know, I cut some cardboard and it was okay. 
Um, I actually did a cut test video, sort of, and you can see that, so um, that'll be a better representation of how it cuts than what I remember now. So watch that video, and you can see. So definitely not bad, but it's not great either, so it's kind of like a 4 or 5 out of 10, you know, on cutting. Uh, carry is actually really good. Um, this clip works great. It carries in the back left pocket really well. It's not super heavy. I mean, it's definitely not light. It's probably like five ounces, but it's not heavy at all, really. It, I didn't notice it being an issue. The form factor is pretty good. It's not super thick. It's not thin either. It's probably like 0.6, something like that. Let's find out. Point five three eight, point five three eight. So I mean, it's on the thicker side in terms of a knife, but for something like this, I don't think anybody's questioning how how thick it is, and it wasn't a problem in my pocket. Um, never had a problem with the lock in pocket so far. I mean, I've had it for like a week and a half. Haven't had a single problem um, with it like disengaging in my pocket or anything like that. I haven't forgotten at all i kind of have a routine where i open it lock it close it lock it right it's just and if i know i'm gonna be just fidgeting then i can you know leave it open but for the most or locked but or unlock sorry for the most part i'm doing this lock cut lock right or fidget lock you know i just have a routine and i have this mental thing now when i go to put it in my pocket it's aiming this way, and I take my thumb, and I think, this is my theory, I think this is why they made it tip down. Because when you go into the pocket, you go to push it into your pants, you can take your thumb onto the lock and just push forward. And as you're pushing into your pants, you're, <laughs> that's what she said, as you're pushing it into your pants, you're pushing forward, and you're keeping it locked. So you're just making sure, like, so if it's unlocked going in, you kind of push, Boom, and you're locking it as you go in, you know? If it were tip up like this, right? If it went in, if the clip was here and it went in this way, again, what she said, you would, and I hate that I'm not right-handed in this case, but you would put it like this, and then you go to put it in your pocket, right? Let's say you're going to do this, okay? If the lock was this way, then you would be pushing to unlock as it went in your pocket. You would maybe have it locked, you know, so you lock it, and then you go to put it in, and you might you might accidentally unlock it going in your pants. Now, it wouldn't matter as much because it can't really come out, but I don't know. I think that might be a reason. Now, they could have flipped the lock around then, I guess, and you could have pulled down to unlock or uh, up to unlock, down to lock. I don't know. I think maybe that was one reason. I um, can't really think of any other good reasons why they did tip down. Other than people are just used to the being this way, I think. Like, you pull it out of your pants. Oh, that's the main reason. I'm a dumbass. Sorry, guys. It's in your pants. You pull it out. You already have it ready to go. Right? You drop the lock. And you're good to go. If it went in your pocket this way, you would have to pull it out, flip it around, right? And that might be weird. So I get it. My biggest concern, basically, is just that I will not lock it, and I will put it in my pants. And then, you know, you shake the wrong way, and you have a blade going right into you. Um, now, I have heard from a couple people in the comments that they actually have carried theirs unlocked on accident or whatever and it's not even opened so i think maybe your thigh pressure just your jeans would keep it together like you would have to spread it pretty far for it to come out you know and even then would it deploy all the way i don't know but those are my uh thoughts on carry uh sounds yeah i mean it's a home run on sounds Like, I don't think it gets better on sounds. It's such a satisfying sound. Now, I think it's annoying to everybody else in the planet except for knife guys. Except for the knife guy holding it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but to the knife guy holding it, I think it's like solid gold. You know what I mean? It's just so fun. 
loud, clicky clacky. I mean, it's a fidgeter's dream, honestly. So sounds ten out of ten. All right, fidget slash uh, or action slash fidget factor. I mean, we've basically covered that. It's a real fun knife to operate. So you just slide the lock. This lock breaks in, by the way. It was a little bit gritty when I got it. Now it's like buttery smooth. I mean, not buttery, but it's very smooth. So just pop it down, drop it, pop, drop, and lock, baby. Slide. Lock back up. Put the lock on. So... Let's do that again. It's locked, comes out of my pocket, right? Got it in my hand, got to whack it in my pocket. Uh, put it in the hand, and then disengage the lock. This lock has nice jimping all over it, right? You can see the symbol locked, disengage, unlocked, right? Then you hold here at the top. You don't hold this bottom bar, right? You don't hold this bottom bar, you hold the top section which I kind of hold it cup like this, and then I just pinch like this. You let go, and it falls down. Now the blade is free to slide, right? And you see it's kind of held in down here. You can't see it because of the clip, but there's that section with the, yeah. And then it runs on a track in there. So you drop it, slide forward, gravity takes it out, right? It can't go past this point. Can't lock up till this section clears. You drop the hammer down. Now you have it locked up. Okay, now it's open. Is there any play? Yes, there's a little bit of play here. It's not crazy, not worse than any OTF. Now I can lock it again. Now the handle has locked down. Can't open it. Is there play? Yes, there's more now. Now it rattles, right? But who cares? Because you're going to squeeze it to use it. And now, see, there, it doesn't make the rattly sound. It's got very minimal play now that I'm actually going to use it. Sure, if I do this, it's a little rattly. It doesn't matter. If you're bearing down to use the knife, it won't be moving all over the place. Okay? So, you're locked up. Now you want to cut, you do your cuts and whatever, and now you want to you want to put it away. Disengage lock. Oops. Disengage lock. Open up again. Right? Lean back. Slam the hammer down. Pop the lock. And you're good to go. Put it back in your pocket. So we'll do that one more time. Lock down. Open gate. Slide forward. Hammer down, lock on. Now we want to disengage. Disengage lock, open up, blade down, hammer down, lock on. Good to go. Um, you learn it really fast. You pick it up, and it's super fun. Um, something to talk about is how it works for lefties. And I will say it's not as good lefty as it is for righties. Um, but it's very manageable. It's very fun. I, I really have no issues with it. Could you carry this in your left front pocket with the clip? Yes, absolutely. 100% really wouldn't bother me at all. Now, would I do it? No, because the, the edge is going to be facing inward. So I never carry any knives in my front left pocket where the edge is on this side. Always want the edge facing this side. Why is that? The burger incident of 2021. Um, uh, I was in my car and I believe I was filming something, I don't remember, and I uh, had a Trevor Burger in my front left pocket, it was a right-handed knife, a front flipper, so it was really dumb, but it was before I ever fucked myself up, so I reached into my pocket, and I guess at some point my thigh, I had opened my, like, bent my leg or whatever, I don't know, and the front flipper had opened the blade this much, right, so the blade was, here's a Trevor Burger, not the knife, I sold that one, but it was like this, right? So something pressed on the front flipper and popped it open like this. And it was sitting in my pocket like this, right? Because the blade, when open, is facing inward. And you don't want that in your pocket. You want the blade, see, let's say I'm in my right pocket, it opens. 
The blade is against the seam of my pants. It can't open up. It's just going to get pressed shut. If you have it this way, it, it can open up in your pocket, right? At least this much. So it was sitting in there open that much. And it reached into my pocket to grab something. Which, and I didn't think there was an open blade in there. So I went in hard, right? And I went going for my chapstick. And that blade went zoop, and went right into the webbing of my hand. Um, I got to find the scar to remember which finger it was. Um, I believe it was... Yeah, right there. You can see the white skin or whatever. That's the scar. That thing went in about a quarter to half an inch right into the webbing of my hand. Right into the meat. So I went, and I was like, oh, that was a pinch. And I pulled it out, and then blood just squirting all over my truck. And, uh, yeah, it sucked. Anyway, that's the burger incident of 2021. So ever since then, I will not do it regardless. I know that this is dumb because if it's going to open in your pocket, it's going to open in your pocket. But, like, it shouldn't. It has a lock and all of that. Right? I get that. But I still won't do it because if it deployed, it would be facing this way and I'd be reaching into that. If you're right-handed and it deploys on accident in your pocket, yes, your leg is probably going to hurt. But if you reached in, you're not going to graze the edge, right? It's the little things, guys. Uh, but anyway, other than that, I'll carry it back left pocket and not complain about it at all. So that's fine. The lock. Um, much easier to operate right-handed. Right? You can disengage, open, close, re-engage, do all that stuff with the thumb right-handed. <laughs> Excuse me. Left-handed, the way I do it is I disengage with the index finger, slide it open, slam it shut, and then I usually turn it. Pop it with the thumb, spin it around, and now I can do whatever I need to, right? Disengage, pop. Disengage, pop. Disengage, pop. Disengage, swing out, pop, right? Could I use my index finger both times? Yes, I could. But it's a little bit awkward. I got to, like, lower the knife down once it's open. Like, to get to it, you got to, like, to disengage is easy because you're just pulling down. To re-engage, I don't know, it just seems odd to me. So I drag down, do this, you know. It's awkward, but it works. Honestly, it works really well. So it does work left-handed, but it's not ideal, I guess you would say. It's not set up or ambi or anything. So there you go. That's the rundown on the Riot XOM. Uh, I really love this thing. Um, it's... Currently, I think my favorite knife to come out this year. I just did a video on Q1 knives, and you know, the Quiet Carry 9 is amazing. There's a bunch of amazing knives that have come out, right? But this is special. It's just different, and it hits different. You know what I mean? And I enjoy that. If they made a thinner version of this, not even, they wouldn't even have to make everything thinner, but it would be cool if maybe they made it like just slightly thinner. If you got it like around half an inch. And then use, you know, a thinner stock and a thinner blade. Be curious how it would work, but you could call it the Riot XOM uh, and just do everything the same. Lock, grind. I mean, it could even do a Tanto. I would love that. And just have it be a little bit slimmer and thinner. Uh, and if it worked, that would be fantastic, right? Just use a super hard steel or something um, and see if that works, you know? But uh, big shout out to Blade Ops for the original assist on this. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Link down below to them. If I find any of these available, I will link them as well. But mostly I'm going to link Blade Ops because they hooked it up. Um, and let me know what you guys think down below. I really appreciate your opinion. I love this knife. I hope you got one if you wanted one. If you did not, I assume there's many more coming and probably cooler versions. So if you missed it. You might be lucky and get a cooler version. If you see a cooler version, please let me know. And uh, maybe we can get somebody to make inlays for these because it wouldn't be all that hard, would it? Um, so maybe we could get somebody working on that and then I wouldn't have to buy anything other than, well, other than the new inlays, but you get what I'm saying. All right, I love you guys. Hope you have an absolutely fantastic day and I will catch you later.